So I've been using the Note 8 now for about a year and I think it's time for a long-term review where I can tell you all about what I've experienced in the last 12 months of using this device. Hello there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now the Note 9 is coming out in a very short period of time and I think it's good to look back at the Note 8 to see how well it's performed and to think about is it worth me upgrading to the Note 9. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So my plan isn't to go through this like a normal review as if I had only just got the device. What I'm gonna tell you is about the experiences of using it for the last year and whether it's lived up to the kind of the specifications that we find on the paper, whether it's like that in uh, real life. So of course, the defining feature of the Galaxy Note range is the S Pen. If you take the Note 8 and compare it to the Samsung Galaxy S8 or the S8 Plus, the S Pen is one of the big differentiating factors. Of course, there are other things like the camera, which we'll talk about in a moment. But for me, I like the Note range because it has that S Pen. Now, the Note 8 has not disappointed me in that respect. I also had the Note 5 before I had the Note 8, and the Note 8 has been just as good with the S Pen, if not better better because Samsung have improved the software and the functions and features that you can activate and use with the S Pen. Now the Galaxy Note 8 was at the moment of its launch one of the biggest phones that Samsung has ever made. I mean that huge display but they made it kind of taller and thinner by using that 18.5 by 9 ratio and over the year of using the phone I must say I have found it on occasion just a little bit too big. Now I'm used to using big phones. I don't like using the kind of the smaller phones down at the five inch range or, or even smaller. I've got used to using Galaxy Notes. I've got used to carrying them around, but I must say that this version is so long that it really does almost stick out of every pocket that I've ever tried to put it into. However, I have got used to it. It is a limitation that I find. I like the size of the kind of the Note 5. A little bit bigger would have been okay. I think they've gone too big. And then when it comes to the Note 9, I, I don't know if they're gonna go in even bigger. They, they can, of course, and they may do. I think that would be a mistake. I think we're getting too big now. But I just wanted to tell you that if you were thinking about buying a Note 8, uh, be careful of the size. It is that little bit bigger. Uh, and uh, it is a factor when you're using it. Now, one of the great things about the Note 8 is the six gigabytes of RAM. Of course, we're seeing that more in other devices now when you look at the kind of the new S9 and the S9 Plus. Six gigabytes seems to be coming into the standard for flagship devices, and it's been brilliant. There has never been a case where the phone has just been too busy or there's just too many apps open or it's just too much going on. Six gigabytes, well, in fact, I think four gigabytes is really a sweet spot, but six gigabytes is just, it's just out there. And I'm, I am guess that Samsung are gonna go with eight gigabytes maybe with the uh, Note 9 and that's fine, but I tell you six gigabytes has been an absolute dream uh, and certainly has lived up to all that I expected. Interestingly, the use of six gigabytes is also meant to be able to improve multi-window support because you've kind of got two apps actively running together. Uh, Samsung added in this kind of app pairing shortcut where you can kind of launch two apps uh, side by side there or one above the other on the screen. And I must say, I don't use that feature at all. I'm, I'm just not a multi a window user. It, I just, I'm just i used to the smartphone being a device that's in your hand and it's giving you one piece of information. I don't want my email and my Twitter open at the same time or Facebook and Instagram. I just don't do that. I switch between them quite happily and I don't need to have that uh, multi-window support. It's there, but I never use it. Talk about other features I don't use, and that is, to be honest, I don't use Bixby. It has got an active uh, button there on the side, a dedicated button that you press and I use it occasionally, mainly for alarms and kind of reminders. Remind me in five minutes to, you know, ring my mum or something like that. And it's quick, you press the button, you speak to it, it sets a reminder. But in more complicated things like, you know, whatever you meant me to do with Bixby, however you meant to do it, I just don't use it. If I do want to interact with a voice assistant, I use Google Assistant. That's also what I've got on other devices. So I'm used to kind of being invested in that a whole ecosystem, that's where my calendar is, that's where my reminders are, that's where everything is, and I don't use it. So the Bixby button could not even be there and I really wouldn't miss it, to be honest. However, one thing I would miss, and that is the dual camera. The dual camera on the Note 8 is absolutely fantastic. Uh, of course, it was the first time that Samsung had put a dual camera on a device, and I was really pleased they'd done that on the Note. I was looking to upgrade from my Note 5. The Note 8 answered all of those 
uh, ticked all those boxes for me. And the dual camera has been great. I use both cameras all the time. The two times zoom is absolutely fantastic. Great for getting in, you know, if you want to get something sh closer in, you know, a portrait of a child or a pet or something, absolutely fantastic. You've still got the wide angle. We want to take some kind of landscapes. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Now it has also got this live focus mode, which uh, under certain settings, you can take both pictures from one uh, camera and the other camera simultaneously. You get both of them stored there, which is great. To my detriment, I haven't used the, the live focus feature very much. I should do because it really is good. It's just that I just kind of go into the camera and quickly take a picture. I don't kind of go into that live focus mode. But if you do take a moment to set the camera app up right, then that live focus is a great feature. Maybe not for the focusing thing, the background, but the fact you can take pictures with both lenses and then you can choose and crop and do whatever you want. So dual lenses on this is fantastic. Of course, we're now seeing that on other devices. Absolutely, it will be on the Note 9. Uh, and of course, the cameras always get better. But I say, will say one thing, the Note 9 is meant to have dual aperture, just like the uh, S9 range. Now, personally, I think the dual aperture is just a gimmick. And I've got a video about that over on the Android Authority channel. I don't see why you need it. It doesn't do anything in terms of enhancing the pictures. Uh, and you can go and watch that video if you want to find out all my arguments. So I won't be upgrading to the Note 9 just if I do upgrade, just because it's got the dual aperture feature. That's just not going to happen. It's just a gimmick. Or it's also worth mentioning that both lenses have got uh, optical image stabilization, which is really, really good. So you don't have to say, oh, I've got to keep it on the 1x or the wide angle because that's the only one with the, uh, the image stabilization. It's on both lenses. So brilliantly, the camera's brilliant on the Note 8. That's all I can say. And I've never had any problem with it. Loved using it. I've taken it all around the world with me when I've been to, for example, Google I.O., I took it and I've taken pictures over there. If I'm just going for a walk with my family, I've got it here. It's just been brilliant. Now, of course, one of the complaints about the Note 8 was the position of the fingerprint reader. Samsung have addressed that with the S9. Looks like they're gonna address that with the Note 8 by bringing it much lower. It hasn't really been an issue for me. I kind of got used to kind of going in sideways, you know, to round up, not kind of holding the phone up here and trying at the back to do the thing. I kind of just go in from the side and it works. I use it all the time. If I can't get to it, if the phone is laying on a table, I just quickly tap in the pin number. It's not really been an issue. I don't use the iris unlock. I don't use the face recognition. I don't use any of that stuff. Fingerprint or pin, that's basically me. And it's been great. I've never been frustrated with it. Uh, it's always been accurate. I've never been like, oh, I've got to try 20 times before it will get it right. It's been fast. It's been efficient. It's, in fact, you forget that you've got it. It's just a great way to unlock your phone. Uh, and so, yeah, works. Now I do a lot of videos on like Google versioning, uh, fragmentation, I just did a video on Project Treble over at the Android Authority uh, website and people do seem to complain about Samsung. I don't know why because my Note uh, 8 has been upgraded from uh, its version 7, it's now running version Android 8 version 8 Oreo. It's always getting uh, security updates. At least once a month, there's a security update coming through. So I've been very happy with the software support that uh, Samsung have been offering for the Note 8. It's, it's running a recent version. It's got the latest security patches. I don't know what else more I could ask for, really. I think a thumbs up for Samsung for, for doing that. Now, in terms of the long-term use over this one year, has the phone slowed down at all? No, definitely not. It's just as snap as it was on day one. Has the battery life remained the same? Absolutely. Great battery life. Many, many times when I'm putting my phone to charge before I go to bed, it's still on 50%, even 60%. Okay, now obviously there are days when I heavily use it in different situations. I've never run out of battery life on it. Just let me put that. I've never actually, it's turned off because I've run out of battery. There's been a few days where it's been down at 30%, 25%. Absolutely fantastic battery life. That's remained consistent all the way through the year. And the display, the display has remained consistent. There's no signs of anything like burn in or color fade or anything like that. So the performance, the battery and the screen have all remained consistent and good in this whole year that I've been using the phone. The other thing I use a lot on this device is using the S Pen for the off-screen memos. Quickly someone tells me something, I just quickly take out the pen, don't need to unlock the phone, don't need to type in a pin number, take out the pen, start writing and then it gets saved 
uh, into your notes. When you next unlock it, you can sort of work out what's happened and you can save it and delete it if you want to. Absolutely brilliant, use it all the time. People say, quickly take down this phone number. Can you come at this hour? You know, and I just, you know, quickly note it down. Absolutely brilliant, I love the S Pen. Off-screen uh, memo has been fantastic. Now the GIF thing where you can write a message to somebody and send it to them as an animated uh, GIF or GIF, depending on how you want to pronounce it, never used it, it's just a gimmick. Okay, maybe if I was a 13 year old, it might be fun, but I'm not. Uh, and I, it's, just, it's just rubbish. But the off-screen memo writing, absolutely brilliant. Okay, so let's talk a bit about the Note 9, the rumors that we know about the Note 9, and whether that will affect my purchasing decision, whether I would want to upgrade from the Note 8 to the Note 9. Okay, first of all, of course, we know what the S9 and the S9 Plus is like, so we're pretty much guaranteed that the S9 Plus is a kind of a template for what we're gonna get in the Note 9. So we know about the processor, we know about the memory, and we know about the storage, and maybe, you know, Samsung will tweak those, maybe it'll be 128 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes, or however much money you wanna pay, but we know that we're gonna be getting a refinement or a minor improvement over the S9, so dual cameras are gonna stay, we've got dual aperture, we've got the, the uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 or the Exynos uh, 9810, that's basically what we're gonna get on the internals. And of course, we know we're gonna get an S Pen. Now, Google, Samsung have been kind of advertising the S Pen during their sort of promotion for the upcoming launch event. There's rumors that maybe the S Pen's got something new in it, like maybe Bluetooth and a battery inside of it. I do like the S Pen, it is one of the main reasons that I uh, buy it. So if it is an amazing improvement on what you can do with the S Pen, that might certainly be a, a good reason for me to upgrade. But until I actually see what they're gonna do with that S Pen, that will be hard for me to judge. Of course, we're expecting uh, Android Oreo, probably 8.1 from launch, which means it's gonna be a project treble device. This is the Note 9 we're talking about again now. So that hopefully means that we're gonna get Android P on it fairly rapidly. So that might improve the upgrade path in terms of time. The Oreo is running on my Note 8. I'm hoping it's gonna get Android P as well uh, down the road, but I would imagine the Note 9 would certainly get it first. Uh, and so would the S9 before it gets down to the Note 8. So that would be a possible reason for wanting to get the Note 9 if I really wanted that latest version of Android from, uh, from Google. Now a couple of other things that are in the Note 9 that I think will be interesting. One is we're probably gonna get that super slow-mo mode, smart super slow-mo, whatever it's called, it's in the S9. That is a really cool feature and I do use the camera a lot on my Note 8. So having that in the Note 9 would be certainly a tick box for wanting to upgrade to the Note 9. And there is rumor of HDR recording. So that's recording sort of 10 bit color. Uh, now that will be interesting. We'll see whether that's just a rumor or whether that comes out to be true. But again, the two things I use the most on my Note 8 are the S Pen and the camera. So if you've got super slow-mo and uh, HDR recording and a better S Pen with Bluetooth, that can do something or other, that's certainly gonna be an interesting uh, case for doing an upgrade. And the other thing we're probably gonna find in the Note 9 that we can see now in the S9 is the, uh, the dual speakers and the Dolby Atmos. So that's a good upgrade that's gonna come uh, probably to the Note 9 that will be better than the Note 8. So in that sense, obviously we've got the better CPU. Okay, the S Note 8's been absolutely fine in terms of performance, not been an issue. Maybe more RAM, but six gigabytes has been fine. Maybe something new with the S Pen, that's certainly interesting. Something new with the camera in terms of super slow-mo and HDR recording, and then the dual speakers. So if you combine those things together, is the upgrade worth it? Well, probably not. For me, I think upgrading every two years is probably the wisest choice. I'll wait till the Note 10 comes out or whatever it's gonna be called if they don't want to go to a double digit uh, and, and sort of marketing name, the Note X, or whatever they decide to do, that's what I'm probably gonna do. Unless that S Pen feature is something absolutely, truly incredible, that really would push me. Then the other pluses are the dual speakers and the, uh, the extra stuff on the camera, HDR recording and super slow-mo, certainly uh, good things, but not enough to want me to sell this device and then spend extra money to buy the uh, Note 9. 
And so there you go, my look at the Note 8 after one year. Now, a bit of a ramble maybe. I hope I haven't said S9 when I meant Note 9 or Note 9 when I meant S9. If I did, uh, please forgive me. Uh, so what about you? Did you have a Note 8? Have you been using it? Tell me in the comments below, please, what you thought about it. And also tell me what you want to see uh, in the Note 9 and whether you're thinking of getting a Note 9. Other than that, you know what I'm gonna ask you. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do share it on social media. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.